This is a no tan. This is the scene from which this no tan was taken. And this is a painting based on the no tan that was taken from the scene. So what is a no tan? Well, first of all, the word no tan is a Japanese word that means light, dark. Uh, there's, there's lots that's been written on no tan. Uh, I will show you two books in case you want to re research it further. Uh, this book called uh, No Tan, The Dark Light Principle of Design um, is, is one that gives you a, a good explanation and foundation of how the Japanese use the No Tan. And then this one, really old book, but it was the first one to introduce No Tan to, uh, to the uh, Western world. It's called Composition and it's Understanding the Line, No Tan, and Color by Arthur Wesley Dow. So if, if you want to really pursue uh, No Tan in Depth, those two books I would recommend. But for our use, a No Tan can be uh, one of two things. It can be a, a small thumbnail study. So, and, and usually uh, when we are, are approaching a subject, we might want to do a number of small thumbnail studies. It would take us only a minute. So what do we need for that? A small sketchbook like this. This is a little man. I think it's six by six sketchbook. Uh, that's, that's good enough. It doesn't have to be a small one, but this is just very handy. Okay. Uh, and I'll just show you. See, these are very quick. Uh, uh, the size of the No Tan sketch is about one inches by two inches or something like that. You don't have to uh, be exact about that. They're very quick. Um, there are more. Um, and uh, just show you some examples, and there are more. And sometimes when you see a No Tan sketch, you can tell what the subject is. You tell what it's going to be. Sometimes you can't. Why is that? It's because No Tan is about shadow and light. Uh, before I go into that, let me just tell you that a good pen for doing the No Tan is this one. This is called the Tombow Pen. The black Tombow Pen has a brush on one end and it has a fine, a relatively fine tip, medium point, sort of, on the other end. That's an excellent pen for doing a quick no tan study. Um, for doing um, that, that is the uh, that is basic. Um, what we may say the everyday use of no tan. But then a very important use of no tan is in the painting process itself. So what are we doing when we're doing the no-tan? What are we actually looking for? We're looking for shadow. When we do the study, uh, the no-tan study itself, we're looking for shadow. What's in shadow? What's not in shadow? Now, here is a composite of my painting, the original photo from, uh, from which the painting was taken, and the no-tan. Now, if you look at that no-tan really carefully, you'll see that the dark in the no tan is defining the shadows that you see in the photograph. There is no reference there to water and there are really no references there to trees. You might make out a tree or two here or there. But the, the focus is on the shadow. Where is shadow? That's what you do in the black side, in the black part of the no tan. And that's all you do because the white then remains what's not in shadow. And so why do we need this? Why do we need no tan? Well, it gives us a foundation for developing our paintings so that we can keep the light and shadow uh, in relationship to each other. So that they work together and so we are able to keep the colors, the shadow colors in shadow and the light colors in light. It makes for just a much stronger painting. I'd like to show you now how we go about doing a no-tan sketch. Um, first of all, <clears throat> I have here a 10 value uh, uh, scale, a 10, a, 10, a 10 unit value scale. This is one that I developed myself and this is available free for all who um, download this uh, this video. So what I have here I've taken the values that fall into shadow, their values 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. The values that are not in shadow are 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Then, when I set up the palette, I set the palette up with lines of color 
that fall into these value ranges. By doing this, by setting the palette up like this, then I don't have to think and try to figure out where I am when I'm actually translating the notan into a painting itself. So I'd like to show you now uh, the steps that we go through to do a painting based on notan. I've already got a preliminary drawing here. The steps are the same as the steps for doing any study. First of all, uh, in order to do a notan painting, you need to have um, you need to read the colors of the subject you're working with. Now, I'm choosing the subject of this fishing boat, this wooden fishing boat uh, in water. I want to keep this very simple, keep the subject very simple uh, to make this easier to, for you to comprehend. So uh, I've chosen this subject. Now the, what I see is the colors I'm going to need are going to be uh, kind of in the in the orange range and in the blue range. So I know that the colors on my palette, um, I have the Rembrandt version of um, transparent oxide red, which is sort of a red orange. I see lots of that in this in the wood of this boat. And I see as it gets lighter, it gets more gold. And I know that mixing hence a yellow light with transparent oxide red gives me these variations in gold as it gets lighter and so I have chosen then hence the yellow light to mix with that to get this value line that can show me the degrees of orange I'm seeing in that boat. Um, the other thing I'm seeing is blue. Blue of the water, blue of the sky. So I chose, uh, I, I'm seeing variations of blue. Some of the blues tend to be a little bit greener and some of them tend to be a little bit, uh, lean a little bit more towards purple. Um, so I've chosen a blue that uh, it can be manipulated to do either of those things. This is ultramarine blue, and I've developed a value line of the ultramarine blue that goes from blue to, um, uh, shall I say, from dark to middle to light with titanium white right here. So that's what I call a value line of color. I find creating a value line of color very helpful. So in order uh, to set up um, um, a, a painting from which a no tan uh, is the foundation. I know that when I'm working on the shadow side, right here, when I'm working on the shadow side, um, I'm working right in here. That's this area here in the uh, on the value scale. When I'm working on the light side, where it's not in shadow, that's this side over here. And over here, that's the value of the scale. So if it's not in shadow, it's somewhere in here. Could be the darker version of not in shadow. Could be the lighter version of not in shadow. It'd be somewhere right in here. That's what we read as artists. When it's in shadow, it'll be right over here. So it's going to be, it could be a lighter version of the shadow, or it could be a darker version of the shadow. So that's what we're going to do, show you how we translate. First of all, how we create a notan, and then how we translate a notan into painting. So. Um, first, the first thing we do then, as I said before, is you decide on the color and you set up the palette. Getting back to that. And why do I have this yellow here? Well, just in case I need, um, just in case I need to turn this, uh, the blue line, or change the blue to be just a little bit more of a greenish blue. That's there just in case. Um, so that's step one. Step two is to do a preliminary drawing. I've already got the preliminary drawing de uh, done here. I did that. And for, to save a little time, what I want to emphasize about preliminary drawing is that it's done freehand. Don't cheat yourself by projecting your drawing and tracing your projection. That gets you nowhere. That teaches you nothing. It puts an image there and make people think that you know how to draw that image, but it's not going to help you at all as, as far as your uh, being an artist goes. Uh, it's better to learn how to do a preliminary drawing do it freely, don't try to make it perfect, uh, do it freely and do it by discovering uh, where those lines are and where, uh, where to place them in space. So the, the next step then is Notan. Now, once you get the preliminary drawing then this is Notan which is what this, um, this lesson is about. So to do the Notan we can choose a brush 
Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of brush it is. Um, it's just a brush that's going to give us good coverage. I think I'm going to need a flat brush for this. So I'm going to choose, I'm going to go a little bit different there. Just choose this flat brush. Um, <clears throat> and it hardly matters, uh, as long as you use, use a, a dark color for the underpainting of no tan, it hardly matters whether you use, uh, which of these colors you use. Uh, I'm going to choose the blue this time. Um, and it needs to be very, I'm not quite that wet, <laughs> but it needs to, uh, it needs to be sort of thin. Um, it's just going to be a little foundation, so it needs to be kind of thin. I'm using um, Mineral Spirits here. This is Turpinoid brand of refined mineral spirits. So I added just a little bit of Mineral Spirits right here to just the edge of this transparent color of Ultramarine Blue. So what we'll do. We're going to start looking for shadow. We're ignoring boat. We're ignoring water. We're ignoring anything except shot. Our subject is shadow. At this moment, in this time, our subject is shadow. Where do I see shadow? I see shadow here. I see shadow. Oh, I see. Oh, I see shadow here. I see shadow here. Oh, shadow here, 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 here. So I don't separate this shape from this shape. Um, we're not looking at shape. We're not defining shape. We're defining shadow. Uh, which is a good reason to have, if you have a preliminary drawing done ahead of time, if you need that shape, which you're probably not going to need it, but if you do need that shape, you'll have a little indication there, or you can always put it back. So, all right, so I see shadow. Um, I see shadow going to here. Mm -hmm. Shadow, shadow, shadow. Okay, what's happening right over there? It's a little bit reflected light. Some of that goes kind of into shadow. I'm going to indicate shadow here. And then stuff that starts getting hit with light. There's shadow right in here. And then shadow comes straight down here. No, that doesn't get uh, to be a separate shape. It's a shadow shape. A shadow shape has nothing to do with the shape of the subject. So this is a shadow. This, this, so this comes straight down. It joins this and becomes part of that shadow shape. Yes, all this is in shadow. Shadow, 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 shadow. Mm. In fact, there's very little light, very little not in shadow in there. Uh, there's a little bit of shadow right there. Shadow here, 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 here. Come on, shadow. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> More shadow. And that shadow comes right down into the water. And there's shadow right here. Now we have reflection. There's difference uh, difference between reflection and shadow. Uh, boats sitting on water uh, will cause a shadow on the opposite side of the uh, direction of the sun. There'll be a shadow there, and there might be a little bit of reflection in there too. But um, we look for shadow. So that shadow is the shadow of the boat is extending right over into here, and that shadow <coughs> is coming. Let's see, there's a little bit of shadow there inside that reflection. It's coming on down the shadow on the water there. One, way, uh, one really good way to read shadow is to squint. Just simply squint. It's a little gift that God gave us that we don't use very often as artists, but it's one of our best gifts, and it's free. Squint. Just squint. Shadow. There's shadow here inside. There's some shadow inside there. Shadow here inside. A little shadow in there, shadow. There's a shadow right back in there. Shadow, 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 shadow. Oh, da, da, da. okay. I'm going to kind of ignore these long things for the time being because the last time being I may ignore them forever <laughs> because the the uh, I'm concerned with teaching these the no tan not about boats. All right, so there's shadow here now. <clears throat> what's happening in that water is that the waves are creating shadow. Where the waves turn away from the light. We have shadow where the where the uh, we see the surface. Uh, the light is reflecting on the surface. We have light, so we have shadow. We have shadow here, within within that in uh, inside of that wave that's back there. We have shadow here, and we have little patterns of shadow in here. We have continued continued patterns of shadow. Shadow here and. Um, and here, now watch that, 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 that pattern takes on the, the movement of the water. So you don't have to worry about that, just, just look at the shadow 
and just get the shadow patterns in and you will have the movement of the water. So we've got, uh, there, there's some little shadow patterns going all the way back, right back in here. You see those little shadow patterns and even in, in the distance, even in the distance there we're going to see, we see some shadow. We see, um, um, we see some shadow in the distance there and we see kind of a uh, alternating between shadow and not in shadow as it comes down. So the shadow in here, here, here. Now, what do we have? We have a notan. There we are. Shadow, not in shadow. Um, in the sky, we could, um, some of those uh, clouds, if, if we really wanted to get, um, really wanted to get specific, some of the bottoms of the clouds are in shadow. So that too would end up being a part of the notan. Uh, all right, so, uh, and I think that, would be that pretty much, now the next, the next step then would be to step back and to look, uh, squint, squint at your notan, uh, and then compare it to the subject and look just for a shadow, see, hey, did you miss anything, did I miss anything, that's what I'm looking at right now, I think I pretty much did already locate the notan. Uh, that boat. So now we have it. We have the shadow. We've located the shadow and we have where it's not in shadow. So then the next step is to interpret this into a painting. The best procedure to follow when we're interpreting a no tan, you know what? The best piece, uh, procedure to follow in any painting is to start with the darks first. For the most part, sometimes, sometimes that uh, we would find reasons um, not to start with the dogs first, but that's just a good way to go. Now, uh, let's be very, I'm going to be very general about this. Um, this I'm presenting this as a study of how to interpret or how to translate a notan into a painting. So I'm not intending to do a finished painting here. I'm intending to present this to you as simply a study of how this works. I'm going to begin then in the shadow areas. I'll begin right in here. This seems to be an interesting place to begin. So what I'll do, uh, I look in the value area of the shadow. What value of the notan side of the shadow? What value is this? What, what, am I, what am I looking at? And so if I refer back to my value scale here, just put this right down here. Let's just let it sit there. <clears throat> now I refer to the shadow side I know if it's in shadow, it's going to be one of these values. So it seems to me that it might be about right here, about value 8. Now, sometimes I think I might see, and a photograph might record, uh, record value 9 and value 10. And we painters need to be careful about that because too much value 9 and 10, especially 10, looks like a black hole in the painting itself. And we need to be careful about that, so it's better to start out with it maybe just a little bit lighter than we actually see it and then we can adjust it as we move along. Alright, so what color am I looking at? Well, it's kind of a, uh, the, the, the blue of the ocean is reflecting onto the orange and so I'm seeing a combination of orange and blue. I'm going to start right in here. <clears throat> right in here with a combination and I'm starting into this sort of value 8 area and I'll simply stroke that in. Just a very broad stroke. I'm not trying to put in details yet, so I'll, I'm just going right over the window areas, stroke, stroke that in, and I'm seeing some of that above here too. So I'll stroke that. I'm going to switch brushes. This is a, I have a this is an oval brush. I have lots of we have lots of angles and stuff there. This is a fill brush. It's it's uh, not going to give me the the edges that I need. The flat edges I need. So I'm going to go to a, a flat brush. That's an important t thing too. We use the shape of the brush that better enables us to to, um, to, put, the, to put the shape to to, to um, develop the shape we're trying to make. All right. So what's going on here inside that boat? Well, the boat, same thing. It's really a very similar thing. Maybe a little bit darker and maybe a little cooler. So I'm going to stroke that inside the boat, just in the shadow area. And I'm losing that shape, you see, between the two. Then we have some junk there in front, um, so I won't, uh, I'll just leave that. 
Uh, okay, so if I go around over here to the other side, inside that, uh, I guess that's called the hole of the boat. So that seems to be getting a little bit bluer. So uh, we'll just do that in the shadow area. All right, there we go. That takes care of that. Uh, as uh, this is this is light. This is collecting not in shadow. That's not in shadow. I'm not going to touch that right now. I'll get that later. Okay, what's happening in here? Oh, we have some interesting things happening in there. Uh, we have we have some uh, within the shadow. We have some colors reflecting, or uh, um, some of the water is reflecting back onto the boat itself. So look what's happening. Even though we know that's a um, a wooden boat, what we're seeing back here is we're seeing blue of the water reflecting onto it. So take it like that, uh huh. And they, we're still going into that. We're still in that that um, that value. We're still in that um, the shadow value area. So we're like right in here. Uh, and it gets a little bit. It uh, gets uh, begins to get more more uh, warm. You see it. You can see that blue on the boat, and you see you can actually see it. It's getting warmer, getting more uh, uh, what you might call brown. I call it um, low value orange. <laughs> That's uh, artist talk. <clears throat> uh, and as we are coming towards the front, we are seeing that that's getting. Um, that's the staying brown boy. Look what we're seeing there. We're seeing some of that wonderful gold that goes up and almost goes up into that uh, near value six right here. And uh, uh, it sort of does this, doesn't it? Let's do a little bit more of that. Okay. And then um, the front part kind of turns back and gets a little bit darker so that goes back into the value 8 8 ish learning to read the values within the shadow area and within the not in shadow area will go a long way toward enriching the uh, interpretation of your paintings okay now now we've got that uh, we have a little bit of in shadow right here, right there. Whoop, that was way too dark. I'm going to fix that. No problem. Just do this. Okay, that's better. Now we continue the, the, the sh working on the shadow as we move into the water right here. I'm going to move right in here. Now that's sort of nondescript and it's really dark. I'm going to move up into the value uh, 7 to 8 area. Uh, we have the color of the water and we have the color of the ship reflecting, or color of the boat reflecting into the water. So I'm doing that. And as we get, um, as we move down here, we still, still have that, we have the, 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 um, the water and we have the but see all that kind of merges in together into our vision of shadow. But see, I'm still say, staying within those shadow areas, just the shadow areas. And I'm going to do same, the same thing here. And we look into those shadow areas of the water, and we see that they turn, uh, they turn sort of warm, dark warm. So I'm just pushing the brush. Now when you push the brush up like that, you create that kind of ragged edge, like you see at the edge of a of the wave and ocean as it turns. And so I'll just do that. And remember this is just block in. So <clears throat> the block in is the first pass that you make of any painting. So when you're doing the block in, you're just putting in the major value areas and the major color areas, you're not trying to define details. So you don't find these details as you go. Um, the first the first pass that, that we're doing right now, just the first pass, is just just the block in. So we're not concerned. We're not concerned with details. That's what that was all about. Right, boomy boom. Now um, let's go back up here and visit shadow area up here, and we have a little bit of um, shadow area right there that I, I had indicated, and in here, and um, and back in the distance there of those windows. I'll go ahead and just block that in 
We'll come back to that and refine it later, like I talked about just a minute ago. There we go, there, and there, and there, and there. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, all this is light in light. This is, I mean, it's called not in light. That's not good. <clears throat> it's easier to understand if you say shadow, not in shadow. Shadow, not in shadow. Instead of saying in shadow, in light, um, that's a little bit too broad for the for the interpretation of no tan. So we'll just say shadow, not in shadow. Okay, as we move into the distance here, um, within that uh, shadow area, uh, these these shadows that we see within the wave get uh, lighter. Now they're a little bit darker towards the front here, boom, boom, like that. But then it, they go towards the center. I may need to pull. There we go. Now they'll get lighter. Uh, lighter as they go into distance, but they're still shadow areas. All right. Same thing over here. Lighter as they go into distance, but they're still shadow area. Okay, there we go. And uh, let's just kind of let that go right through the boat. And let's put a few right here. And alright. <clears throat> the clouds in the sky. See I'm going I'm dressing all the shadow areas before I before I move on to the light. Clouds in the sky seem very light. They're about a value. Uh, you may see they're kind of transition value. Uh, they're darker than you think they are. I'm going to go into the, uh, the ultramarine blue. Uh, they are grayer, so I'm going to pull a little bit of the transparent oxide red down into that. And um, I might need, let's see if I can do that with transparent oxide red, a little bit more white. There we go. That's probably what we need. Now, I'm looking at something here. My palette um, is a value 5. Or it's about right in here. So I know that when I see a color mixed against the palette, if it's lighter than the value of the palette, I know I'm in the not in shadow colors. If it's the color of the palette are darker, I know I'm within the in shadow colors. So that makes it easier when you work on a, a value, um, a middle value, call it, uh, palette. It makes it easier to see those things. Okay, so I'm going to just kind of stroke that uh, Stroke those clouds in up there, and then that. Now let's bring it down just a little bit like that. <clears throat> that would. All right. Now we have translated all the shadows into their colors, into their range of values as we saw them, as we were able to read that color. Now we're going to move to the not in shadow colors. have to rinse the brush out really good, get all those darker colors out of it, because here's where we're going to be. Not in shadow. Not in shadow. This is where we'll be working, right in here, but not in shadow. And so, where to begin? It doesn't matter where we begin. We can begin at just about anywhere. Um, I think I'll just uh, begin at the bottom and work my way up. So now, I hope I haven't contaminated my colors too much. Let's see what we got. Let's see if we go here, here, here. Let's, I guess maybe my arm might be in the way of the camera there. Let's see if I can do something about that. Need to get that a little bit. Um, put it up, put it up, put it up. And put it up here. And while I'm in there, why not just go ahead, um, <clears throat> go ahead and get these. That um, this lighter right here and gets a little darker as it goes around. So I need to I need to show that. And so it's lighter right in there. And then as it reaches around in here, it gets a little bit darker. There we go, right there. And that blends in. Now we got a transition a transition area there where it blends in. Um, and it blends in right here. Now I'm, I'm going to reach, I'm going to jump into the shadow area just a moment here and reach into that shadow color to bring in for that hull. Is that what it's called? The front of the boat? Um, I have to be careful because I'm, <clears throat> I don't really understand boat language. Um, I do enjoy boats, but I don't understand the language. So, all right, so that's, uh, that defines that pretty good for our block in. I'm going to go in now. Here's a good place to begin to move into the uh, uh, using uh, a little bit of white 
kind of dull the intensity of of the color of wood we see there uh, right here now we're seeing all this is not in shadow so I'm going to pull a little bit of the blur into that tell you what here's something that you might have to do when you're in the midst of something you might have to mix another value line of color if you define uh, to see a color that you need I need a value line of that transparent oxide red and so I'm going to quickly quickly develop a value line here and I'll show you why I need that okay good right there. It doesn't have to be thoroughly mixed. So I'm going to rinse this out of the brush. What was happening was that that was getting to green and I needed it to be off. I needed it to be more neutral. It's a neutral color of wood. So uh, you know, we get back up in here. Now I'll come down. If it's getting to green, red is a complement of green so that would help neutralize it. So I'm coming right here. Ah, that's more of what I'm looking for right there. Let's get that a little bit more, a little bit lighter. There we go. That's more of what I'm looking for. And let's do the same thing right here. Now this is a very broad brush. I wanted to keep that broad brush because I wanted to keep it in general. So uh, this will be, this is just kind of a, a guesstimation. There we go. Bang, bang, boom, and. A little bit more of this red and uh, some, some tiny little shadow areas there that we that uh, we need to recognize acknowledge all right let's go back into the let's go back into just this area the boat that is actually a little bit less you see less of the wood so you see that um let's see this is shadow this is shadow i did i neglected that let's get that i'm going to jump back into the shadow for just a moment here and uh go back in the shadow blue area uh and define this and uh in the inside here okay and uh I'm going to go back into, uh, we have a kind of a bouncing back and forth of light and shadow. Whatever that stuff is, this gear of some sort, uh, you don't have to know what it is to paint it. So I'm just going to kind of, you know, wing it a little bit there. All right, now, I'm going to start with, a, I'm going to start with the sky and come down now. Um, so the sky is not in shadow. Uh, only the clouds are in shadow. Uh, so I'm going to go into the non shadow it seems like a oh, let's see here yes about a value three two to three uh in fact the sky it actually gets uh sky gets lighter as it gets, it gets closer to the horizon now here's where i'm going to use this yellow to so because that blue of the sky is um is a little bit more of a warmer blue let's see that there we go i'm just going to very quickly uh that ends up being darker than the uh, I want it to be well it's actually darker than those clouds so I'm just going to get that in quickly I'll put this cloud back in I just want to indicate that quickly now the reason I want to do that do the sky before I went back in and finished the water area is because the light we see reflecting on the water, not the not in shadow. The light we see reflecting on the water is the same. It's, the, it's this color that we see in the sky. Mm -hmm. Remember, it's still we're still blocking in. Um, let's see. Okay, you kind of get those clouds. They're kind of wispy. You don't see. Oh, 
you don't, uh, you hardly see them. They're very light, very, very wispy. So, and that not that important to the whole study of no tan anyway. Um, so, uh, so then what we'll do is we'll take this color, the same color of the sky. We'll take this color in the same light, not in shadow value, and uh, and we'll begin to uh, define the the not in shadow of the water. And even here, let me see if I can squeeze that in. With, the brush is a little bit big for that area, but I don't want to switch brushes. So I'm just going to see if I can squeeze that in here, here. And I also want to squeeze it in over there. I don't want to forget that. I think I'll go ahead and do that now. It's in the shadow area, so um, so I'll just um, right here. Um, that was a little overdone, but we won't worry about it. Okay, that, then that kind of, glad I didn't forget that, that would have been awful. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to rinse the brush a little bit now because I want to get that darker out. Going back into the light, or the, not in shadow, not in shadow of the water. And quickly, not in shadow. The sky color reflecting on the water. That serves two purposes. One, it we are, we are recording what we are observing in nature, but it serves a compositional purpose too. Uh, and that is, it helps unify the colors in the painting. It helps lead the eye. When you have this single color here, and then moving around uh, throughout the scene, uh, it helps to unify, helps to keep the eye moving in the whole painting. So I'm going to quickly throw this in. All right, now I'm going to pay attention to the shapes of those of that movement here. Try to um, stay as close as I can to now this uh, into the movement of the water. This is getting darker. And then, in fact, that's in shadow. This area is right in shadow. I almost missed that. Okay, let me get that back in shadow. So we're seeing. What we're seeing here with the movement of the water is actually the movement is reflecting the shadow color of the boat. It's, it's in there. That's what it's picking up instead of the sky in there. So I'm going to go back into about value. This is about a value of five. Um, okay, let's begin to kind of lose that and keep that. No, it's not value five. Let me get that towards value five. Let's see if this is going to work. Uh huh. Let's run it in here to the value of five in there. That's better. Okay, so let's do this. Now you see, we have it within the shadow volume, and yet we have that uh, the color of the boat reflecting. I want to get just a little bit more of that right in here. I might not see it, but I'll put it there just the same. And here's the thing too: uh, when you're using uh, this method, we artists are not cameras. Uh, I have no desire to be a camera, not to try to reproduce. My, th the thing that makes uh, being an artist fun is to being able to interpret what we're seeing, to create an interpretation, not just a copy. So this enables to do that. We can we can revise wherever we want to revise when we're painting. By doing that, we're emphasizing what we want the viewer to see in the way we want the viewer to see it as artists. And that's part of what our creativity is all about. Okay. Now let me see if I can be a little bit... Okay. And then what do we have? We still have Not in Shadow back in here. Let's get that a little bit better. And uh, this does begin to fall. This falls into that kind of transition. That's a kind of trans transition value of color right in here. And let me see now what have we got as far as a study and as far as a uh, um, you might call it kind of a almost a it's almost a block in of what we see. Let me stand back and see what we've got. Have I missed anything? Okay, now we have all of those details. If if you if it's just killing you. <laughs> 
all those details, the flag, the, I don't know what those things are pointing up in the sky, all those, those long things. And you might say, well, those a fishing boat's got to have those things. Well, okay, you put them there. I may put one or two in just to, uh, you know, satisfy those people who've got to have it. Let's see, so this would go, that's in the shadow, that pole, whatever it is. And I know people who are boat experts out there are getting ready to write me an email. And it's okay. You don't have to know what it is to paint it. All right, so I'm just going to kind of just put an indication of that, and that has a chimney. I always have one anyway. All right, so then you get too much of that kind of stuff going on, you kind of mess up. Um, and from this point of the study, from this point, you begin to put in the details. You begin. I'm just going to kind of indicate little things in here, just to, just, to, just to, um, to, to please those that might be asking for it. That's all. Um, what was I saying? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. When you're doing a study like this, it, it, the, the details, these, these kinds of details of things become unimportant. What's important is what you're, you're trying to uh, learn or discover within the study itself. And I don't like what I just did there, so yeah, let's just, yeah, let's just get rid of that. And you say, oh gosh, what a mess. Well, yes, 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 what a mess. Here we go. Put it in, take it out. It's paint. We just create a little cloud with that. Okay. Hmm? Okay. All right, let's do just a small recap of what we were doing. Our purpose here was to introduce and explain and show you how no tan can work for you to help you create better paintings. So the process of, of using no tan um, is very simple. Uh, same process you would use for doing any kind of study where you first of all um, you set up your palette according to the colors you're seeing. Um, you do a preliminary drawing. Uh, then you do the no tan. What are you doing there? You're looking just for shadow. You're you're just taking a single single value and exploring shadow, only shadow. And then that gives you a foundation for setting up accurate colors within that shadow area. So that's what we were doing with this this particular lesson and video. And what I want to say here is that this approach to teaching painting is typical of the pr approach we're using in all the videos that we're making and producing every week um, and available at dianemise.com. Uh, my purpose for doing these is to make art theory come alive. Art theory seems to be pushed on the back shelf for so many people. Our composition, the way composition works, and what can make the things that can make composition exciting and and can cause um, composition to be to enable us to uh, be more expressive in our work. I think of composition as being the heartbeat of painting. And so what I'm doing in all of these videos is taking one tiny element of composition and exploring it, trying to break it down for you and exploring it in depth. My intention is not to do completed paintings, but we're doing studies where we explore these things, these various ideas to see how we can make them work. My intention is that if you do these studies, then you will enrich all of your paintings. You won't be just making a single painting of a single subject, but you will be giving yourselves tools to enrich all your paintings. So, I invite you to go take a look at our videos in our video store and see, uh, keep an eye on every week um, as we add more videos to them. And as I always say, keep in mind that your creativity is only limited by the limits you put on it yourself. Enjoy.